Hey folks, welcome back to Prepping with Sarge. So on the Facebook groups and the Reddit forums for survival and prepping, I often see people say things like, uh, why would I even bother to grow a garden if SHTF happens? Some raider or uh, what do they call them? Wolf preppers or whatever is just gonna come and take my stuff. And while I don't agree with that, I don't think that that's the right attitude to take. I think that if you form good partnerships with your neighbors and your mutual assistance group, then that becomes less of a concern as you can take turns, basically who's going to be watching the garden in a really bad situation like that, which is again, you know, we're not focusing, this is the problem here with the, uh, if you're prepared, this mentality of if you're prepared for the zombie apocalypse, you're prepared for anything is that people are forgetting the short-term events that lead all the way up to, you know, the worst case scenarios, right? Is, and we've got a recession, right? So there's benefits to growing your garden right now Forget about like zombie apocalypse for a second. Just think about like the right now, the benefits for it, right? But since this is a topic that comes up a lot, I thought maybe I'd do a little uh, discussion about stealth gardening. Stay with me now. All right, thank you for staying with me. So what do I mean by stealth gardening? Well, there's guerrilla gardening, which is like basically you're planting seeds and crops on uh, in locations that you don't own. That's a whole nother topic. Maybe we'll talk about that another time. But stealth gardening is when you use things on your property that the average person won't know what it is. So obviously these fantasy wolf preppers or raiders or, or whatever with, that people are worried about, you know, that in the situation that may never happen, they're gonna know what a tomato and a pepper is. But there's things that you could plant on your property that most people are not gonna know what they are, right? And I'm gonna show you a couple examples today. So the, uh, the idea here is that the average person doesn't know what are the edibles in their area they know the groceries that are in their at their grocery store right so they're going to recognize certain things but what about this beauty back here see that purple berry yeah would most people know if that's edible or not the reality is is that members of the survival community bushcraft community prepping community homesteading community we know what a lot of the wild edibles are and you could plant those in your in your area but the average person's probably not going to know what that is and they're going to wonder if i eat that am i going to die this is where you can put it to work for you these beautiful berries are literally called american beauty berry and then yes they are edible in case you were wondering i mean look at the color on that right but the average person has never seen this they're certainly not sold in your grocery store so they're probably gonna not know that that's poisonous uh, that that's edible uh, now the leaves you don't want to eat the leaves the leaves are toxic for humans um, they do serve some other functions include including you can crush them up and use them as an insect repellent and there's another uh thing that you can do with them that's uh uh, illegal so I don't want to talk too much about that and get my channel in trouble but has to do with uh, the way that Native Americans used to catch fish you can look that up if you want again this plant is called American Beauty Berry um, the but the the berries themselves are edible in fact there's nothing wrong with these here they do have a little bit of a medicinal taste to it like a cough syrupy kind of taste to it but they are edible and so you could plant this one around your property and the average person is not going to touch it right so if you're worried about somebody coming in and stealing your garden they're probably not going to steal these ones here all right folks and this here is partridge berry to be a better look at the leaves right here this one here is a nice ground cover and both the leaves and the berries are edible and the thing is this is another one of those things that if you planted it in your property most people would not know what it is uh, so it's Kind of a nice little nice little plant to be aware of i'm not seeing many of the berries left it looks like the wildlife have gotten to a lot of these ones here but that's glad we at least found one we could show you what it looks like All right, now here's another one here. This is called Smilax. Uh, it has several names that it goes by, but uh, it, this one's very unpopular because it's actually has nicknames such as Devil's Weed or Devil's Vine. It is very, very thorny. This one here is young, so it's still not too thorny yet. Um, and I've had problems with this in my yard where it's very, very invasive, tends to take over, and uh, tends to give me uh, an itch if I touch it too much. But many, many people uh, actually eat these. So the, the tips, right? So what I mean by the tips, like this top part here, uh, especially if you can find it when it's newly grown, uh, you can pinch those off. 
And the top part of it, when you pinch them off, can, can be cooked and eaten like asparagus. If you plant this one in your yard, nobody's gonna think like, hey, that looks like and probably tastes like asparagus. They're gonna think, oh, that's that devil's vine. I shouldn't touch it. Okay. Pennywort is another one, sometimes called dollar weed. Now, this is why I tell people, don't, mo don't weed and feed on your lawn. Let the weeds grow because a lot of weeds are actually not only edible, but medicinal as well. Now, pennywort is one of those that actually helps to reduce inflammation tastes very similar to parsley to me but of course you could cook it up and do it like spinach as well and what's really cool is that if you dig into the ground here they have these really long root systems that are uh, almost like spaghetti like and you could actually there's some carbohydrates in there as well so uh, definitely a good one if you, a lot of people see this and they're like oh I got to get rid of that pennywort or that dollar weed on my lawn it looks terrible no it's it's edible and the average person isn't going to know that all right, so a couple other ones that come to mind for me as I, if I was thinking about like designing uh, either my bug out property or my homestead in a way where it basically was wild edibles all around that are in a way that it's like a stealth garden with edible and medicinal food all around that the average person isn't going to recognize. The normies aren't going to recognize. Autumn olive is another one that I would plant in there. Absolutely, autumn olive is a great plant. Um, roses, a lot of roses are edible, not just the flower uh, leaves, the, not just the flower petals, which have a ton of vitamin C, super medicinal for you, but the leaves actually a lot of times are, uh, can be brewed into a tea and it tastes very similar to uh, black tea and has a lot of antioxidants in it. And um, when the roses, when the petals fall off, uh, if you let it develop into a, if you let it develop into a rose hip, uh, that can be a very sweet treat to forage later on. Also full of vitamin C, loaded with good stuff for you. Uh, what else do we got? Mul do we say mulberries? Mulberries is another one. Like, you know, the average prepper homesteader knows what a mulberry is and that it's edible, but the average normie doesn't. They'll look at it and they'll be like, well, I don't know if that's poisonous or not. I'm not going to take a chance. Pawpaw trees, right? So pawpaw trees, the average person doesn't know what a pawpaw is. I've shown people pictures of pawpaws and they're like, what is that? Kind of looks like a green potato. And when you cut it open, it is full of this uh, very fleshy, mucusy fruit inside. It has a weird texture to it, but it actually tastes really good. It tastes like a combination of a mango and a banana. And uh, that's a great one to plant on your property. And you can do baked goods with it. You can, uh, you can uh, freeze it and make like an ice cream out of it. And uh, wild lettuce, wild lettuce is another one. People just see wild lettuce and they're just gonna think it's a weed. Wild lettuce not only is edible, uh, it has a little bit of a bitterness to it. So if you've ever eaten dandelion leaves, it's to me it's similar to dandelion leaves, maybe just a little bit more bitter. Uh, I don't mind the taste at all, but you could certainly come up with some kind of dressing to put on there if you wanted to uh, doctor up the taste a little bit. And wild lettuce has a compound in there that actually helps to reduce pain. So it's a great one to grow on your property. Folks, I hope this gave you lots of ideas. Uh, you know, we can't we can't run our life in this prepping lifestyle with worrying about what if, what if, what if. And this is the problem that I see on the on the Facebook forums and the Reddit forums is that for every idea that somebody comes up with, somebody comes along and just is really negative and says things like, well, that wouldn't work because X, Y, Z. Sure, we can come up with all kinds of what if scenarios, but right now we're living in a time where there is huge recession going on. Inflation is through the roof. Your grocery prices are, are, are really, really high. Uh, you know, I don't know if we're ever going to have a zombie apocalypse. My life's, you know, my my uh, my gut instinct says probably not. But could we have like a really bad situation, like a civil war in this country? Sure. Could we be attacked by one of the enemies to the United States? Yeah, absolutely. And when that happens, that is going to feel like the end of the world. And yeah, there are going to be, you know, things like theft is going to be through the roof. And yeah, people may go for your garden in situations like that but we have a lot of space in between here and there uh, and there's a lot of benefits to growing a garden as it is but if you're really really worried about it and like that's the mindset you're in is like there's no point in growing a garden then consider some of the concepts that i said today you can absolutely grow crops that are both edible and medicinal in a stealthy way that the average person isn't even going to know it's food okay Folks, if you got anything of value out of this, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to check down in the links down below. I drop all kinds of discount codes, cool stuff in there for products that I think you'll like. Keep planting your seeds. Keep stacking your silver. This is Prepping with Sarge.